So when we're setting out to design an enclosure for a single driver system like this, our instincts might tell us to maybe go for a square shaped baffle and a cube shaped enclosure. It'd be really symmetrical and it'd be really pleasing to the eye. But there are a couple of really big sound quality reasons we don't want to do that. And we're going to save ourselves a lot of trouble in the crossover if we go ahead and follow a few simple rules in the design stage. Let's jump into the CAD model so I can explain why. When we're designing an enclosure, we have to take a few things into account. In this case, we need to avoid edge diffraction. When the sound waves reach the edge of the baffle, they can diffract, causing humps in the response. If all edges are the same length from the driver, we'll end up with large humps in our response. The same is true of standing waves inside our cabinet. By making the dimensions irregular, we can avoid large standing waves and diffraction. Damping material and roundovers help out big time, so we'll be doing that also. All of this means less work in the crossover by use of notch filters and attenuation. So before we move on any further, let's take a quick look at the driver that Tang Band sent me to work with. This is their six inch coaxial driver. A coaxial driver means that our tweeter is located directly in the center of our woofer. In this particular case, our tweeter is an inverted aluminum dome. Our woofer is a bamboo paper cone. If I turn it around, we can see we've got an underhung motor design. We've got a two part composite basket and all of it is being powered by these neodymium pucks that run around the motor structure here. It's a really interesting design. It feels really solid and I'm really excited to build with this and see what it can do. The tweeter is supposed to play up to about 40,000 Hertz. I don't currently have a microphone that can measure up to 40,000 Hertz, but there is one coming out this year. So stick around, we might check it out and see what it's doing up there when that comes out. I'll be going with the 50 Hertz tuning frequency. As you can see, I also modeled an extended bass shelf in red, but the output just wasn't there. This should still give us a nice response down to the high 40s. So far on the channel, you guys have seen me use veneer quite a bit and for really good reason. It's super easy for a beginner to get professional looking results at home. I really wanted to challenge myself for this video, so I'm gonna do an automotive finish. Thankfully, the channel Hi-Fi Side, which I'm gonna to link to down below, has a full guide, very in-depth, on how to use lamination to cover all of your butt joints. Doing this is gonna prevent the need to use Bondo and save you a ton of time. I'm gonna link down to that channel below. Be sure to give him some support. It's a really in-depth guide and I highly recommend it. I'm gonna be using this method from now on anytime I want to do an automotive finish. Working with Bondo can be a humongous headache and if you choose to only use glue and clamps, you will not need to use Bondo at all. I did choose to brad nail this to move a little bit quicker and with the roundover that did cause a few problems, but if you only glue and clamp this, it will be a breeze. Next time I will be gluing and clamping myself. So 
go show that channel some support. Highly in-depth guide, really talented builder. Um, so thank you for that guide. So the crossover wound up being pretty straightforward here. We've got a third order on the tweeter circuit and a second order on the whooper circuit with just a little bit of impedance correction. If you
So we're ready to see how the design performs at this point by taking some measurements. We'll start by taking an on-axis frequency response measurement. I'll take some off-axis measurements. These were done by approximation and not a clipple near-field scanner, so keep in mind that there may be some errors and some reflections mixed in there. And then lastly, we'll take some distortion measurements around 85 dB. So let's talk about some subjective impressions of these. First of all, they sound phenomenal. They center image like crazy. The soundstage is nice and broad, very deep and well-defined. Instrument separation is there. All the detail and clarity is there. In the bass department, you are gonna want a subwoofer in most cases. That's true of all full range loudspeakers. It's always recommended that you're using a subwoofer to help fill in those room modes and really even things out. In terms of material that I've been using to listen to these, I've gone from everything from the War on Drugs to Steely Dan to Donald Fagan's solo work. All of these are really complex recordings with a lot of layering and all of the detail and sound staging is still kept with these. They really bring out all the detail and that's exactly what I was looking for in this type of speaker. Before we go, I wanna say thank you to Tang Band for sending me these drivers. They are an absolute pleasure to work with. The people there are great. Tang Band is a huge company in the DIY scene. You can find them in many, many of your favorite DIY designs and that's for a very good reason. Um, I feel these are a compelling buy and if you're looking for a really, really simple, straightforward build, having a coaxial driver eliminates a lot of the headache and the routing work associated with two and three-way designs. So I would highly recommend this design. If you wanna try something different on the crossover, go for it. There are a lot of different ways that this could be achieved. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It helps out small channels like mine tremendously and it will help me get other manufacturers to send me products to build with. Um, if you would have done anything differently, leave a comment down below and let me know. And once again, I'm going to leave the plans to this video right at the end. Pause and screenshot those if you intend to build these. And once again, just reach out if there's anything I did not cover in this video that you've got questions about. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.